Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1485. In this video, we got to see how to look up the latest product price based on a date. Now, in the last two videos, we saw lookup formulas to do this. But in this video, you're not going to believe it. We're going to use some ifs and the max ifs function to do this lookup. Now, if we go over to the sheet all, our situation is this. And here's the five videos that we're doing on this topic, each with a different solution. Here's the lookup table. And we definitely have duplicate products and an effective date. So if the date is from 1-1-2018 all the way up to, but not including 3-1-2018, the price is 10 bucks. From 3-1-2018 all the way to 7-15, it's 12, and then anything above 715 is 9 bucks. Now, in the last two videos, we required a certain type of sort on the columns in our lookup table. But this solution won't require any sort. Now, I did it in a strange sort here just to prove the point. Now, here's our transactional data set, and here's where we need the price. So for ABC, we definitely need 10, because 226 and 217 fall into that category. On 3-1 and 4-1, ABC should get 12. And of course, 930 and 721, the price should be 9. All right, let's go over and see this wild solution. Here's our table, and you can sort it however you want as long as the records remain intact. And here's what we're going to do. Now, one big assumption about this lookup table. There are no duplicates. And for a lookup table like that, that's a safe assumption. It means we have different products and different prices with different effective dates. But there are no duplicates. If that's the case, we can use the sum ifs function. Now, this is a really strange use for sum ifs, because sum ifs is intended to look through a data set, find lots of rows, and then add all the numbers. But what we're going to use it for is simply to pick out one number. And because there's no duplicates, this will work. Now, there's one other problem. If we're going to use sum ifs, we have to match ABC with ABC in this column. But how in the world are we going to match order date with an unsorted column? Well, we're going to use, if you have Office 365, Excel 2016 or later, we're going to use the amazing max ifs function. If you have Excel 2010 or later, you use the aggregate function. And I'll show you examples of both. Now, here's the magic of max ifs. Let's just look at this amazing new function. What did we do before Excel 2016? Well, we had lots of crazy array formulas. But watch this, the max range. Remember, I need to somehow match this not exact date with an exact date here. So for 226 2018, I need 1 1 2018. When I get down to 9 30 for ABC, I'm going to need to find 7 15. That means I need max ifs to return the correct date in this column so I can match it as an exact match against one of these dates. No problem. I'm going to say max ifs. Find the max in that range. Those are the effective dates in the lookup table. F4, comma, criteria range. Well, the first criteria range is definitely going to be product. And I'm going to hit the F4 key, comma, criteria as a relative cell reference for this record, the particular product. Now, right now, what does max ifs do? It sees ABC three times. So it's going to pick out these three dates and return the max, which is 7 15 2018. Now, right now, if I copy this down, every ABC would get 7 15 2018, and that's not what I want. So, comma, criteria range two, I'm going to use the effective date column and lock it with the F4 key. And then, just like we did in our earlier formulas, the logic was I need to pick out any dates in this column that are less than or equal to this date. So writing criteria to argument, you have to put your comparative operators in double quotes, less than or equal to in the double quotes, and then join it. Shift 7, the ampersand, 
to our order date. That means that order date is looking through that column of dates and saying, how many of you are less than or equal to this? Well, right now, there's only one. So the only two conditions for max if will be ABC and that particular date. And so max ifs will return that 1-1-2018. One, one, now I'm going to close parentheses, Control-Enter. Um, for a second, I'm going to Control-1 and add a date, just so we can see that it's returning a date. OK, now I'm going to copy it down and look at that. Now we have our two conditions, the particular product and the date. Both of those can be matched up in these two columns for some if to pick out the one price. Now how did it get 715 down here if I hit F2? Well, remember, max ifs said ABC, so it picked out all those three. And how many dates of you here are less than or equal to that one? Well, it was all of them. So max ifs had to look through all three dates and only pick out the biggest one. All right, now I'm going to highlight this and Control-1, General, click OK. Now F2, and guess what? Max ifs is just going to be in the criteria argument for sum ifs. So sum ifs, the sum range, we're looking through price. Remember, there's no dupe, so it's only going to pick out one. It's actually not going to add anything. It's just going to go get one of those numbers. F4 to lock it, comma. Criteria range, let's do the date range. Effective date, F4, comma. And there it is. That max ifs is going to be in criteria 1, comma. Criteria range 2, right there, F4 to lock it, comma. And then there's the product, close parentheses. And the beauty of this is we have the numbers to go and get, date range criteria as an exact date to match, and then product, and then the exact product to match. Control-Enter, double-click, and send it down. And there you go. We get the same exact prices as we did in our earlier formulas. But it does not matter how we sort this column. If I come over here and sort this oldest to newest, the formula works perfect. If I sort this. A to Z, it works perfect. And if I do a crazy sort, like sort largest to smallest, it still works. And really, there's no array formula calculations like in our first formula, 1483. There's no offset function, which happens to be a volatile function in Excel Magic 1484. This is just straight max ifs and sum ifs. Now, if you don't have the right version to get max ifs, then we can use aggregate. And down here, you actually have to do an array formula. And this formula would take a lot longer to calculate if you had you know, huge ranges. First argument of aggregate says, please use the large function. 6 says, ignore errors. And then we have this crazy array formula right here, which we're not going to go through in this video. And then 1 for k, that says get the max. So that is our substitute if you don't have max ifs. Now, I actually have a bunch of videos on aggregate, including one on this exact calculation to pick out the max values. And there's a link for that video. All right, so in this video, we saw a great solution using max ifs and the sum ifs. And of course, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun, including two more Excel magic tricks where we'll do the same problem, where we don't require any particular sort, and we'll see how to do it with a helper column and even with index and match. All right, we'll see you next video.